Hey everybody, Joseph Rothschild here, aka Mono Blue Tron, back again with another episode of 10 Minute Testing. With the release of Legendary Duelists Ancient Millennium on the Horizon, people are understandably excited to jam the cards contained therein. Now we've already looked at the Crystal Beasts and the Ancient Gear cards from this set, and it'll be a cold day in hell before I look at the Weevil or Bandit Keith support, so that just leaves one more archetype to try out before we've wrung this set completely dry, the new relinquished stuff. So here's the list I've dreamed up. There's a lot of stuff going on here, about as many engines as you can conceivably jam into 40 cards, so as always I'll give you a little bit of background about the archetype, a little bit of a discussion about what I hope the deck can do, and as always, the card by card. So first of all, for those of you who don't know, Relinquished is a monster from back when Yu-Gi-Oh characters' decks did more than one thing, instead of making a Code Talker or 7 every turn. Pegasus, the previously cheerful, cartoony villain, revealed he had a big sucker in his deck, and all the 7 year olds on the playground freaked. Relinquished and Thousand Eyes Restrict were terrifying cards, first in Advanced, then in Goat format, and finally in Dual Links. Unfortunately, they're now very outpaced in the TCG, Relinquished is too fragile, Thousand Eyes is a good instant fusion target, but not a lot else, and despite recent ritual boosters like Pre-Preparation of Rites, it just doesn't compare to its old glamour. But if Konami knows one thing, it's that Retrain sell, so we've got a new Thousand Eyes, a new fusion spell, and a couple of reasonable materials for both. The new monster, Millennium Eyes Restrict, can, when your opponent's monster activates an effect, snag a monster from their field or graveyard, equip it to itself, then negate the effects of monsters with the same name. To prevent it from dying to battle, we have Millennium Eyes Illusionist, who, as a quick effect from hand, can attach a monster your opponent controls to one of your Restricts or Relinquishes. And we've got a Relinquished Fusion, which gets materials from hand, field, or graveyard, and can banish itself to attach a monster to your Suckers. To supplement these cards, we have a small Kaiju Engine, which has historically been pretty good with Relinquished, a small Plant Engine to find both Brilliant Fusion or more more likely Relinquished Fusion, and a Clown Blade slash Brilliant Fusion package to make Curious the Lightsworn Dominion. This card can Foolish Burial away a Relinquished if you need material for Relinquished Fusion, a Millenniumize if you need protection and have access to a Relinquished already, a Fusion to attach a guy, a Slumber to get a Kaiju next turn, the possibilities are endless. So with that, let's get into the card by card. First we've got Garnet, my old friend, followed by both halves of the Clown Blade engine, one Trick Clown and 1,000 Blades. After that are the Kaiju, two big ones, Jizzy Kuri and Thunder King, and two small ones, Gamsiel and Kumungus. After that are the Plants, three copies of Orpheus Scorpio, one Darling Tonia Cobra that will draw every game, and three Lone Fire Blossom, followed by three Millenniumize Illusionist and three Relinquished. For spells, we've got three Pre-Preparation of Rites, two Pot of Desires, one Upstart Goblin, one Interrupted Kaiju Slumber, three Black Illusion Ritual, three Relinquished Fusion, three Brilliant Fusion, and for traps we have four Feisty Solemns. In the extra deck, we've got one Seraphonite, three Millenniumize Restrict, one Baguska for the Clown Blades, one Invoker, one Dante in case we draw the plants but no fusion cards, one Borload, one Ceruyo, one Curious, one Mizus, one Proxy, one Link Spider, and two Link Karibo. And with that, let's jump into the games. So our first match is up against Ancient Gear, and this is just straight out of the anime, Crowler vs. Pegasus, and hopefully it ends up the same way here that it did there. We've opened pretty well, we don't have any copy of the fusion, so we aren't going to be able to make the full Curious combo, but a Lone Fire Blossom is always nice, and we have a Relinquished and a Pre-Prep as well, so we have ample fodder for that card. We're going to go ahead and activate this Lone Fire Blossom's effect, getting a Lone Fire Blossom, getting a Lone Fire Blossom, ending on an Orpheus Scorpio. First we're going to Pre-Preparation of Rite so that we can discard one of these two Relinquished to the Orpheus Scorpio, get ourselves a Darling Tonia Cobra, and then add a copy of Relinquished Fusion from our deck to our hand. We're going to go into a Dante, try and mill another Relinquished, we don't, but we'll still make another Relinquished because we can, as a quick effect, attach something to it with the Millennium Eyes Illusionist we use for its ritual cost. Our opponent's going to start by Normal Summoning Wyvern, we'll go ahead and Solemn that, and then we'll Relinquished Fusion in response to their Ancient Gear Fusion. They send a couple of cards and go to Howitzer, which is a bit of a problem for me because, of course, we can't take the Howitzer, it's unaffected by other monsters' effects, but we can add enough stuff from his graveyard to our Millennium Eyes Restrict so that we can attack over it. He's going to activate the effect of Howitzer again, that gets me the Ancient Gear frame from their graveyard, and now we can attack on our next turn. Thankfully we draw into a Pot of Desires, we'll fire that off first, and what do we find but a Kaiju, that's a little better than attacking over it. We'll go ahead and take the set card with this Relinquish, then activate the effect of Relinquish Fusion in Graveyard to attach the Kaiju to our Millenniumize Restrict. Our opponent's going to start by Normal Summoning a Gold Gadget and a Silver Gadget, Special Summoning the Wyvern in their hand, of course its effect is negated because we have a Wyvern attached to our Millennium. They go into, ah, something that can attack directly, <laughs> we'll chain our Relinquish Fusion, go into a Millenniumize Restrict, and then use Millenniumize Illusionist Hand Effect to attach that sucker to our Millenniumize Restrict. After that, the game's basically over. We'll go ahead and use Relinquish Fusion to get that sucker on our Restrict and attack for 3,900. So our second match is up against a Blue-Eyes White Dragon, and this really accentuates one of the weaknesses of this deck, its inability to be proactive. We are going first once again. We have a copy of Lone Fire Blossom, which is excellent, but we don't have the full combo. We'll have to be satisfied with just a Millenniumize Restrict. We'll go ahead and Normal Summon this Lone Fire Blossom, use its effect to get another Lone Fire Blossom, and get another Lone Fire Blossom, and get an Orpheus Scorpio. Then we're going to send the Orpheus Scorpio in our hand of the graveyard to get Darling Tonia Cobra to get a Relinquished Fusion to our hand. We'll go into Dante, trying to hit a Relinquished. We do not. We'll set two and pass. 
Learning from last time, we're going to relinquish fusion in the draw step so our opponent can't activate any on summon effects. They'll go ahead and activate the effect of Sage with the Eyes of Blue. We'll negate it and attach it to our MER, but unfortunately that doesn't increase its attack power at all. <laughs> we draw into a Kaiju, which is reactive, so we'll attack for zero and pass it back. Our opponent draws into a Dragon's Mirror, which doesn't do anything, so they'll pass it back. We draw into another Kaiju, so we'll pass it back. Our opponent draws into a Dragon Spirit of White and discards it to hand size. Uh, really taking advantage of the mechanics of the game there. We draw into a Ritual Spell, so we pass it back once again, and finally they draw into action. They find a Manju of the 10,000 Hands, which we'll take with our Millennium Eyes Restrict. They afterwards will activate the effect of Return of the Dragon Lords to get back Dragon Spirit of White. We'll negate its effect with the Solemn Strike. Probably didn't have to do that, but it does force the Banish of the Return from their graveyard. Then we'll use the effect of Millennium Eyes Illusionist to get this sucker attached to our MER. We draw into a pre-prep, which is pretty good because it gets this Millennium Eyes Illusionist back in our hand and relinquished on our side of the board. Despite the fact that it has zero attack, our opponent really can't do anything outside of board wiping us that beats us at this point. Our opponent's going to pass it back to us once again. We have a 3900 attack monster, so we'll go ahead and attack them directly, take them down to 200, and pray that they don't draw action for the about 11th turn in a row. They don't, so we thankfully can finally close this game out and this horrifying chapter in our life. So a quick note about that game too, if Do Nothing is a good game plan against your deck, you're probably in hot water. Our third match, we have finally opened the full combo, a copy of Relinquished Fusion and a Lone Fire Blossom in our opener against this unsuspecting vampire player. Vampires are very spooky, but probably don't match up particularly well against our established board. We'll start by activating the effect of Lone Fire Blossom for the third game in a row, you've probably seen this before. Lone Fire into Lone Fire into Lone Fire into Orpheus Scorpio, sending an Orpheus Scorpio from our hand of the graveyard to get a Darling Tonia Cobra, that's going to get a Brilliant Fusion, we'll go into MX Saber Invoker, then use its effect to get a thousand blades from deck. We'll then go into Mrs. Radiant and Brilliant Fuse our way into a Seraphonite. That triggers the effect of Trick Clown in Grave, and that triggers the effect of Thousand Blades in Grave. That allows us to go into Curious. We're going to mill a copy of Millennium Eyes Illusionist, then three cards. We're going to Pot of Desires as well, set one and pass. Our opponent's going to draw. They're going to activate this effect of Vampire Territory. We're going to chain a Relinquished Fusion to get an MER. Afterwards, we're going to get the Millennium Eyes Illusionist from our graveyard to our hand. They'll go into Vampire Brood, then Normal Summon this copy of Scarglet. That is a perfect target for Illusionist. We'll negate the effect of Brood in Graveyard and that should be the end of the game. All right, we've got the jank out of the way. Now it's time to play against meta. Our opponent is on Shadal Dinos, and this is a terrible hand. Uh, unfortunately, our hand is worse. We're going first, and we have a copy of Solemn Strike, but not a lot else. These Kaijus are effectively bricks, and this Black Illusion Ritual, Sans Relinquished, is a brick. This is going to have to be one hell of a pot of desires, and what do we draw? But... <laughs> a Garnet and a Lone Fire Blossom. Okay, so we'll chain Lone Fire Blossoms into an Orpheus Scorpio, set the Solemn Strike, and hope for the best. Our opponent draws into Shadal Dragon, which is probably the best draw remaining in their deck. They'll go into Winda, activate Coddles and Dragon's Effect in a way that I can't profitably activate this Solemn Strike. They'll destroy it, get a copy of Pill to their hand, and then Special Summon an Ultimate Conductor Tyranno, attack me for 3,500 points of damage, and pass it back. Things are not looking good, especially because we can only Special Summon once this turn. We'll go ahead and Tribute over the Ultimate Conductor Tyranno, set one, and hope for the best. Our opponent draws into a Fossil Dig, so they'll go ahead and get a Soul Eating Over Raptor, add a copy of Codals from their deck to their hand, I think the last remaining Dinosaur, then attack us for 4,400 points of damage. So we're still alive, let's see what we can do here. We can always uh, special summon this Thunder King and hope that they can't get over a 3300 attack monster. Unfortunately, this is one of the many decks that, that can. They, they really can get over it. Uh, they'll start by activating Shadal Fusion, going into another window, triggering the effects of Hedgehog and Kodals like they need them. Uh, they really could just summon this copy of Ultimate Conductor Tyranno and beat us to death anyway. Woof. So not a particularly good showing against our first meta strategy. Maybe our second will turn out better. We're playing against Pendulum Magicians, a deck that I hear is okay, I guess. We've drawn a hand that really wants to go second, and unfortunately, we are going first. Once again, it's going to have to be a heck of a pot of desires. We fire that sucker off, and what do we find but... Ugh, a pre-prep and a Solemn Judgment. This Solemn Judgment is going to have to pull its weight. Our opponent's going to start by setting scales and a Star Pendulum Graph. Afterwards, they're going to Pendulum Summon this copy of Harmonizing Magician, getting a Wisdom Eye from their deck, go into a Star Time, and I guess we'll Judgment that. They'll pass it back to us. Now, we really needed them to do something pre-combat. <laughs> we draw into an Orpheus Scorpio, but what do you know, our copy of Darling Tonia Cobra was banished off of Pot of Desires. They'll activate the effect of Pendulum Graph of Space Time, destroying their Black Fang Magician and our only monster. That triggers Star Pendulum Graph and Chronograph Sorcerer, and they're getting back Harmonizing Magician. Things are not looking good, but thankfully they now have monsters on their side of the field, so we can take one of those suckers with Relinquished. That unfortunately isn't going to be good enough. They can just activate the effect of Pendulum Graph of Space Time to destroy our monster, uh, then attack us for lethal. So we're back with the deck, huh. and there's a lot going wrong here. This deck, and I think any deck playing Relinquished, wants to go second. It thrives off recouping advantage from Ritual Summoning by taking its opponent's monsters, but unfortunately you're not really allowed to go second in this format unless you've got a deck that requires a minuscule amount of setup, which ours certainly does not. 
we're also caught in this weird place where we want to lock our opponents out of the game with Millennium Eyes Restrict, but we also require them to attempt to play the game so we can eventually kill them. This deck is also severely hampered by its flagship main deck monster, Relinquished. I was kind of hoping for, like, a retrain or something, but the fact that this monster has to be used as material for the fusion is a massive turnoff, since including him in your deck at all makes so many hands so bricky, no matter how many pre-preps you're playing. Finally, the way monsters work now, you're really caught between summoning Millennium Eyes on draw step and then losing to any attacking monster, or summoning Millennium Eyes in response to an effect and then allowing it to resolve. The worst part of all of this is that this deck isn't even cheap. Millennium Eyes, Illusionist, and even Relinquished Fusion are currently over $10, so it's not like I can even justify buying it to screw around at locals. So that's that. Sorry for the bummer, uh, I want nothing more than Pegasus's cards to be good. If you want to see me play the decks I make on this show on stream, I'm on twitch.tv slash monobluetron every Tuesday and Thursday from 10 to midnight Eastern Standard Time, and if you have an idea for a deck or archetype you want to see me play on a future episode of this show, let me know in the comments section below. Otherwise, I'll see you Wednesday.